Hello, bonjour, hola, oi. Um, sorry it's been so long, but welcome, welcome back if you've been here before. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be doing this set. They were for St. Patrick's Day, but I think they could go for Pride or just rainbows, because everyone loves rainbows. But um, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate it. And let's get into the video. So here I am just... Um, Picking out my sizes, sizing up my tips, that's what I was thinking I wanted to say. It's been a long time since I've done a voiceover, so I don't know what to say. And I'll be stumbling, fumbling, mumbling over my words. <laughs> but here I am, yep, just uh, sizing up my tips. I think these are from Ava, She and our AliExpress, their full cover gel tips, like the gel x dupes but once i sized them out i'm just etching them with my e-file and um, these ones aren't pre-etched i do have pre-etched ones but these ones are not but they're nice and long i do like these so i'm just going over them all i um etch the inside and then i flip them over and i just do the cuticle area just makes it blend in nicely so i'm just doing that <laughs> How is everyone? I hope you're well. I won't be keeping this set on, so I am using a peel-off base coat. This is from Amazon. It wasn't expensive. I was doing the thing where I put like um, a bit of cuticle oil and then top coat, but I just found that they popped off a little too quick. I'd be filing them and pop, it would go flying. So yeah, I'm just putting this on, going up making sure I get my whole nail covered in it, a thin layer of it. I did that on every finger. And now I'm going in with my clear rubber base. This is just to um, help the, what do you call it, the glue? <laughs> Whatever. Everybody has their own method of doing this. This is my little uh, trio of things that I like to use. My Peel off base coat, the rubber base, and then I use either a gel nail glue or I quite often do just use the rubber base as well in the tip. So I've put a layer of that rubber base on my nail and then I'm going to do the same in the tip, doing a thin layer, rubbing it into that bit that I've etched. I would have wiped all the dust off as well before I'm um, doing this. I must have skipped that film in that bit um so i do a thin layer all over the nail not all over the nail all over the etched bit that's going to be making contact with my nail and then i drag a bit off on the edge so there's a little bit there and you'll see i rock the tip on so i place it directly into the cuticle area at an angle and then rock it down this way you don't get gel like seeping out in the cuticle area and it get and you don't get bubbles. And then I'm holding it under my little flower lamp there. Holding it for a few seconds. And then if you do get any spillage on the side, just quickly wipe it off before it sets. I'm holding it down at the sides, making sure that it's uh, nice and flat on there. And we don't have any bubbles. Bubbles! We don't want those. So I'm holding it under there for a few more seconds. I will do a few, a few, a full cure afterwards but just holding it under there for a bit making sure it's on there not going to pop off whilst I do the other nails I took too long faff in there and then I'm going to repeat this process on every finger doing a layer of clear rubber on the nail bed and then getting my tip and doing the same again a layer all over the etched bit and then wiping my brush off on the edge and holding it under the light. I have not posted a video in a while because I've just been too busy. I've got a new dog and I'm busy with my clients and editing these videos takes so long. <laughs> it's not just the filming them, it's the editing and then do the voiceover. <sighs> But I do enjoy doing it. I hope that eventually more people enjoy watching them. But, you know, one day. I am over, I do have over 50 subscribers now though, which is great. Ooh, thank you everyone. 
I probably will talk through the whole video because every time I put any music on there, even though it says it's like royalty free or whatever, it still says there's a problem. So, where you just have to put up with me. Mm, I've got those all on. I would have put those in the lamp for a full cure of 60 seconds and then wipe them all off with alcohol to get rid of anything that's sticky. And now I'm going in with my e-file and I'm using the sanding band. I think it's a 180, so 180 grit sanding band. And I've probably got it on about between five and eight. If I'm doing it on my nail bed, directly on my nail bed, it would be five or below, but because we've got this uh, gel tip on there. I, I don't mind having it a little bit faster. But doing this just kind of blends the tip in to the cuticle area and it's a good chance to get any, if you've got any glue or rubber base, whatever it is you're using. If you have any of that that kind of seeps out of the sides, you can just get it off now. I do really like these tips. They're a nice shape. They're not too thick. They're not too thin. They don't have too much of an apex. Some of them I find they have quite a bit of an apex and then you end up having to size down because they are so big or they don't kind of bend and get onto your nail properly. Then you have to use more product. But these ones I like. I like these. I think I have them in a stiletto as well. But I bought quite a few of them and they were really reasonable. I think it was like three pounds for 500 or like it would be like 280 or something like that. Yeah, we've done that. Brush them all off, get rid of those dust, dusty bits. And now I'm going in my hand file, just refining the shape, making sure they uh, look snatched. And this hand file, I think, is a 100, 180. So it's not, you don't want to apply too much pressure because there isn't anything on these nails yet, so they're still fairly, you know, thin. Just admire my handiwork there. <laughs> Throwing my gang signs, as usual. And now I'm going in with a hand buffer. I just find this quicker than using the e-file just to make sure the whole of the nail is roughed up so that our gel product probably, probably, <laughs> properly adheres. I don't know where this, I think this is from the nail supplier shop. It's just a cheap one. I've had this for ages. What I do is these, t if I've used it a few times, I'll keep it for myself. But on clients, I do always give them a fresh file. So you'll see in the videos when I'm doing my own nails, the files don't look fresh. That's just because I keep reusing them on myself. And once I finish buffing them all, I'm going over with a lint-free wipe and some alcohol to get rid of any dust and under the nail in case there's um, any dust or any residue from the what's it called rubber base gel and I think this is rubber base as well I'm going to go in and do another layer just to give them a bit more strength because they're not very thick and also I like to put a base coat down before I go in with my colours just to make sure they adhere nicely and they go on a lot smoother Let's speed through this because you're going to see me paint these nails a billion times with all the different layers of colours that we're using. This is one of my favourite sets I've done in a while. Hopefully you like it too. I did post it on Instagram. I don't think um, I got too much engagement. Where I've been really rubbish on social media, the algorithms. Oh God, don't you just hate the algorithms? You don't post at the right time or consistently and you just get hidden. If you do want to follow me on Instagram, my nail is the same. My nail? My name is the same. It's at Nuclear Nail Bomb. You should find me on there. Oh, I 
how long, I, I can't really function anymore with long nails. I used to have long nails all the time, but I can't function with them this long anymore. It's just been a while. With my dogs and putting on their harnesses and whatnot. It's just a faff and I'm always catching them. I do miss the long nail life, but being a mum is hard. <laughs> um, I'm going in with this colour. I think it's f called Sweet Light Chocolate. Sweet Light Chocolate. Um, from Geely or Gel Light, whatever you want to call it. It's um, a rubber base, but I just really like this colour. I'm going to go in on every finger and do every finger, every nail, and do a layer of this. Um, I think I do two coats with this. Gives it a little bit more thickness. These tips are quite thin. And also we, then we get the colour. It's a really pretty colour. Pop that in the lamp for 60 seconds and cure. I sometimes do um, cure my thumb on its own just to make sure it gets f um, fully hit by the light because if you're a nail tech or you do your own nails quite often you'll probably find that quite often the thumb just doesn't get the light. Just give it a light. Um, because of the angle you hold it in. Um, I just, you'll see there I tip my hand upside down just to level out the product and get a nice shape. Um, I've done that on all of my nails and I've done two coats. And now I'm going in with this unicorn color from G Elite. And I'm gonna do an ombre, a glitter ombre. starting off in the middle of my nail with this lighter colour and then I'm going to add the darker as well and I've got my ombre brush I think this is from Timu or Aliexpress it was like a pound or 80p or something silly like that it is really they are really useful though I didn't have one before I think I used to just use a fan brush that was from a nail set I had but I really I really like this. And now I'm bringing this colour in. This one's from the gel bottle and it's hashtag slay. I think it's like meant to be Christmassy. So slay like sleigh bells. That or slay girl. But I really like this colour. This glitter's very nice. And then I'm using this Oz from GLE. On the end, so we've got the Oz at the end, at the tip of the nail, the sleigh in the middle, and the unicorn closer to the base, but not quite on it. And I'm just using my little ombre brush and ombre in them together. I'll keep wiping my brush off because you do quite often get a little build up of um, glitter or colour, whatever it is you're using, um, in the brush. And then instead of looking like an ombre, it just looks kind of smushed. And adding some more of that unicorn and then blending them together. I feel like with an ombre, doing an ombre, it's hard to explain what you do. It's one of those trial and error things, it might take a little while. But I do like these colours all together. And I'm going to go on and do the same thing on all the other fingers. I was kind of testing it out on the thumb. I think now I'm gonna just go in and do all of the nails. And I showed you me doing a few 
a couple of fingers and then I've kind of done them all off camera because it becomes quite repetitive watching me do the same thing over and over again. Um, you'll see that I did mainly do the dark colour first and then cure it and now I'm going in again with the lightest one. I'm doing some more of that just because uh, oh, my brain's not working. I'm a little bit tired. It's quite late. Um, going in with that at the end and then just blending it up into the nail bed area. And then over the dark again. I think when, with the dark, if you do that first and then do the light afterwards. Um, well, obviously I did... Ugh. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. It's so hard to explain. I did um, all the colours at the beginning. And then at the end, I'm going in with the, the lightest to just blend it in a little bit more. And now I'm using some alcohol and a lint-free wipe and just getting rid of that sticky layer that will be there. You would have noticed I was running my finger along the edges as well just to keep my shape because we're layering, doing quite a few layers of colour and it can get bulky and you lose the shape of your nail. So I'm running my finger along the edge just to get that shape back. And I'm wearing a glove. Um, make sure you do wear a glove if you're going to touch the gel. You don't want to get it on your skin because you'll end up getting contact dermatitis and allergies and then you can't wear gel anymore and it's just tragic and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going in again with my rubber base. I think that was, is it a rubber base or a matte top coat? I think it's a, oh no, matte top coat. Um, this will just smooth everything out. Because obviously with those bits of glitter and all the different layers, it won't be smooth. And then when I go to do my painting on top, it will look all lumpy and bumpy and we don't want that. So going in with the matte top coat on all the nails. Also, I think what I did here was I put the matte top coat on and then I took the dogs for a walk. <laughs> this is my life. Nails and dogs. I wouldn't have it any other way. My two favourite things. But yep, going all over all of those with the matte top coat. And then I'll cure that for another 60 seconds. And here I'm going in now with my buffer just to refine my shape, smooth out the edges just in case we've lost the shape a little bit. And sometimes I find with glitter polishes, if there's a little bit of glitter towards the edge of the nail, it, you'll feel it and it's annoying. Like feeling that kind of lump on the edge. So I'm just using the buffer. I'm not using a, a nail file because I don't want to change the shape too much, take too much away. I just wanna make sure that the edges are smooth. You can see me running my finger across it feeling Looking, checking to see if there's any glitter. And then after that, I have gone in with the normal file because I guess I wasn't happy with the shape. Always check in. Whenever you're doing your nails, it's really, you need to just s not take a step back, obviously, because it's your hand, but just keep checking and looking at your shape and how it's looking. You can, I think with any kind of art project, you can get kind of too close to it and you're, you need to just step back and take a look at what you've done. And once we've done that, we're going in with another lint-free wipe and some alcohol to get rid of the dust. Look at that ombre. Oh, I love these colours. I, I think green is my, one of my favourite colours. I, I have done like this kind of ombre or a glitter ombre with green quite a few times because I just love it. Uh, anyway, now I've got my little palette and I've got some white gel polish and we're going to do um, our rainbow. I'm painting it in white first just to make sure all the colours stand out with the dark green and the glitter underneath. If I was to go straight in with the coloured gel polish you wouldn't get the full effect of the colour. So doing a little bit of white in the background will just make it pop all that bit more and get the full vibrancy of the colours. It's a rainbow, so the colours need to be vibrant. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I um, really love these liner brushes as well. This is a set that I think it's in one of my nail haul videos. Um, I got a set of brushes they were really like 
good value, like a fiver for I think about 10 of them. And this is I think a 16 mil liner brush and I'm loving it. They've got lids as well so they don't dry out or get the bristles don't get all messed up and I love them. Cheap as chips. And you'll see as I'm going with uh, as I'm um painting I keep checking that it's the right shape and the placement is where I want it. Always check in. My mum always told me, measure me measure twice, cut once. So just keep checking it and then you'll only have to do it once. Because once it goes in that lamp, that's it. You see I'm using a lint-free wipe and some alcohol to clean up a little mistake that I made. I do apologise if uh, my voice is annoying <laughs> or I talk too much. I did have a comment a little while ago saying that um, I don't explain enough and it is mainly because I just don't like the sound of my own voice. So I'm trying to make sure I explain everything I'm doing. But if it is annoying, you can just press mute and listen to some music and watch. Or you can just not watch at all, you know. I'm not forcing you. I do appreciate people watching. <laughs> But obviously, uh, no one's forcing you, so if you don't like it, y yeah. They, you know, there's the door. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Once I've finished um, doing the outline, and I've got it how I like, I'm just filling in the rainbow. In white, it doesn't look like a rainbow yet, does it? But yeah. What would have been smart would have been if I had got a bigger brush to fill it in would have been quicker but you know whatever couldn't be bothered to get another one out this is a little bit sped up oh I wish I could do it this quick I do find when I'm doing my own nails that I'll have my music on and I just kind of zone out and it can you know it can go on for ages <laughs> this video if I hadn't edited it would have been about three and a half hours long I think which is mad if you think about it just for one hand of nails if um, I had a client it would take all day six hours as well as me chit chatting away so yeah it's a little bit sped up I am hoping that I don't leave it so long again next time I want to try and post a video every week and I think I've said this to myself multiple times and it just doesn't happen but I'm gonna try I have got quite a few videos recorded I just need to edit them and I've now run out of space on my uh, my phone and I keep paying for extra space on the uh, iCloud and filling it up because every day I make videos of my dogs or take a million pictures of them doing silly stuff because they're so cute <laughs> so yeah anyway now I'm going in with red I do believe the red is candy from the gel bottle it's my favorite red and I'm just doing my first stripe on the rainbow I'm whacking it in the lamp there so that um, the colors don't all smush together that's a technical term, smush. But um, when you are doing lines of colours right next to each other, you do need to cure in between because gel, if it's decent gel, will self-level. And by doing that, it will start to bleed into the other colour next to it. So you'll end up with a, more of a... What's the word? It would look more like tie-dye than a rainbow. So yeah. Um, the yellow 
is also from gel bottle and I think it's called daffodil and then the pink is from Gialite and I can't remember what it's called I think oh yeah I do I do that's a lie it's hot pink from Gialite and then the green is called Serena and that's from the gel bottle And then I think I've sped ahead because obviously it's very repetitive line after line. That blue, I love that blue. That is my favorite blue from the gel bottle. And it is called, where is it? I've not got it in front of me. So I'm just having a look at my massive collection of gel polishes to find it. can't find it oh here it is it is called blue steel is that right yeah blue steel love that color love that and i'm doing the same thing again on the next finger as i did on the other doing a line curing it i think i do i do do two coats of each color so we can get the full punch of that color. And between each color I am popping it in the lamp. Um, I, I don't think, I won't be doing a full 60 seconds. Oh no, I will be actually, because I wanna do another coat on top of it. And I'm lazy and can't be bothered to clean my brush in between colors, so. I'll do a line, stick it in the lamp for 60 seconds, take it out and do a second coat of that same line, which is probably why it took three hours. <laughs> You're probably thinking, hang on a second, wasn't this nail painted a minute ago? And yeah, it was, but I decided I didn't like it. Um, I painted the rainbow, I painted a sun and a pot at the end of the rainbow and I put glitter in it and all sorts and decided I hated it. So I filed it all off, um, cleaned it off, put on some more rubber base. And I've decided that I'm going to make the pot 3D. So I've got some 3D clay, which is from Geely. And I think this color is skin deep, but I'm going to paint it over it. But I've just uh, got a bit out, popped, it, rolled it in a little ball, popped it on. And I'm using my finger, which is in a glove, and a silicone tool to mould it into the shape of a pot. And I'm like pushing the edges up a little bit so that it's got a bit of a lip and, you know, pops. Because that's what I wanted. I wanted it to pop. I want the whole set to be like, in your face. <laughs> I do love using 3D gel now. I was scared. I've actually had these 3D gels for ages and um, I'm finally a little bit more confident using them. It's so much easier than using acrylic to do 3D work because you can play with it for ages. As you can see here, I'm faffing and faffing um, until I get it how I want and it doesn't set until I put it in the lamp. But these... Um, this silicone tool, I think, was from a set which was really inexpensive from AliExpress or Amazon. You can get them anywhere. And they're really good for moulding. It's like playing with Play-Doh. Like a kid, because I'm just a big kid. <laughs> when I finally got it how I like, I'll pop that in the lamp for 60 seconds. And just like magic, it's black because I think I stopped recording. <laughs> Someone probably called me or something and uh, I forgot to press record again. But I painted it just with a normal black gel polish. And now I'm going in with a little bit of green and I'm painting a little, what do you call it? What's it called? Four leaf clover. Using my liner brush and just... 
think I used the dotting tool then as well to do some dots there, yeah. I'm just alternating between the two to get the shape that I want. And it didn't work out, so I wiped out. <laughs> and we're gonna try again. When I do um, these clovers for each uh, leaf or petal, I don't know what you would call it, I do two dots and then I'll use my liner brush to merge them together. I find using the liner brush I get a nice round edge rather than trying to... Oh, uh. <laughs> I can't speak today. Using the dotting tool is what I meant to say so that you get a nice round edge. Because I do struggle to do that with a liner brush and then going in with the liner brush and just packing out the rest of the petal or leaf, I guess you'd call it. You see I keep like flexing my hand and moving it around and whatnot. That's not just to show you how pretty it is, that is me just checking that I like it and that the placement is good. Once I'm happy with that I will stick it in the lamp for 60 seconds to cure. Um, I've got some gold caviar beads and they're going to be the gold in our pot. I think these are from a set I got on Amazon. Um, I mean, you can get caviar beads anywhere. Um, I've put some top coat on there and I'm just using one of those little what do you want to call it? What they, I've already said what they are anyway to move them around and then add in some gold as well. That is Cleopatra from the gel bottle. And then add in some more little caviar beads until I've got it how I like it. So it looks like it's overflowing with gold. I'm using my um, wax tool to pick them up there. And then the other end just to move them around. And I'm flexing again, seeing if I like it. And then, nope, let's add some more. I think I put a couple of little diamonds in there as well. And then I've popped that in the lamp for 60 seconds. And I'm just going over that with a top coat. You always want to cover your caviar beads with caviar beads with top coat because they do tarnish when you wash your hands and whatnot. Um, and it will also make sure that they're it will help with like gluing them on type of thing as well what's next now we're going in with white on a dotting tool to do our cloud at the beginning of the rainbow i really like this cloud you'll see towards the end we go in and make it 3d but underneath i'm just doing it in with some white gel polish first to give it texture I always do my clouds with the dotting tool so you get some nice little round bits. Like I said before, I don't feel like I do so well trying to do dots with a, a liner brush. I'm going in with a square brush afterwards just to ombre it down a little bit and then I realise I've got an ombre brush now so I can use that instead. <laughs> just ombre it down a little bit so we get a nice cloudy effect. And I'm curing that for 60 seconds. And then I've decided I want to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going in again with some more whites. And now I'm just, you know, examining it. No, nope, we're adding some more. Because it's just not bright enough when it's a pop.
and then again with the ombre brush just dragging it down a little bit and in the lamp again for another 60 seconds and now that I'm happy with that I'm coming in with this uh, what's it called um, candy carving gel it's called I don't know why it's called carving gel because it's not really thick enough to carve it's quite runny and I'm going over my cloud to make it 3D I'm gonna do a few blobs <laughs> on the top round bit I think you can decant this or put it onto your palette and use a brush but I'm going straight in with this little squeezy thing squeezing out some blobs giving our cloud some texture I'm tipping it upside down so that gravity can help in making it a little bit more bulbous <laughs> and then I'm um, just moving it around a little bit with my dotting tool. I want it thicker at the top and then fanning it down a little bit. And I stuck that in the lamp for 60 seconds and now I'm going in with some more white gel polish and my liner brush. Add in some more texture. I love this. I think it looks like a real cloud <laughs> as real as it can look on my uh, rainbow using my ombre brush again just to feather it out a little bit by doing these layers it just gives it so much more dimension I could have just painted underneath white and then done a few blobs but like this has really given it loads of texture and definition depth and made it look more real using another one of those little sticks just to manipulate it and get it how I like dipping it upside down so that gravity can help and I cured that again for another 60 seconds and I'm going in with even more because this cloud's going to be massive jungle is massive I killed that again in the lamp and uh, now I think I'm going to get a milky white gel polish so it adds even more depth and texture they're the uh, keywords of today texture and depth isn't it? I just love it. I think it looks brilliant. I was so happy with this. You might be watching thinking, oh, that love, calm down, it's just a cloud. But, you know, if I can't be my own hype man, just admiring my beautiful work, <laughs> that's gone in the lamp again. And then I'm going in with some more of this uh, carving ge candy gel, which isn't carving gel, it's just, it's just thick gel, really. It doesn't make sense that this set took so long now. All this squeezing, manipulating, curing, then again for another layer and another layer. But I think it was worth it because I really love these. I'm just looking at it now thinking, oh my god, this is amazing. And then tipping it upside down to let gravity help some more. I think I've finally done adding that carving gel and now I'm going over with some matte top coat because it's a cloud and clouds are not shiny so it needs to be matte. I love matte gel polish. It just shows that definition and depth and texture, you know, our favourite things. Oh, this is actually shiny top coat. I'm chatting rubbish. Um... I do this with the shiny top coat, but I do eventually put matte over it because once I've cured it, I decide now this needs to be matte. What are you doing, mate? It needs to be matte, mate. Matte, mate. Love a bit of matte, mate. Um, boom, the lamp. 
bump it goes again. What are we doing now? Now we're doing a sonal ear dab glove on. But and I'm oh my god, I'm touching the gel. It's a sonal way. But I've got some this is lime green 3D gel from G Elite. Cutting it into little balls. I decided they were too big, so I've made them smaller. And we're gonna make another four-leaf clover. But this one's gonna be 3D. Got my silicone tools again. Pat pat. I'm just playing with it until I've got it in the shape I want. Making sure it's got texture. <laughs> Depth and texture. I feel like the, the four leaf clovers are pretty easy to, to do. It's just four little hearts. And hearts are the easiest thing to make with this 3D gel. In my opinion. admiring these beautiful nails and checking that I've got that where I want it and it's kind of central touching it with my bare hands again I'm cringing watching this hearts are easy she says and then I spend an hour faffing with it it would have made sense to flash cure this just in case I touch it and ruin all that faff in, which I think I do, yeah, I did, I stuck my finger in it. Well done, Rebecca, well done. And now we've got to do it again. Everything happens for a reason though. It probably looks better now than it did the first time. I learnt my lesson then and I stuck it back in the lamp. And then I've repeated that process, but we would have been here all day if I had uh, shown you all of it. This video is just so bloody long already. I've been cutting stuff out where I can. But I've done that three times and I'm showing you the fourth one. Don't know why. Cause it's exactly the same as the other one, just upside down. Tap, tap, poke, poke, drag, drag. All of that. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, and we've got a four-leaf clover. I think I've probably been sticking it in the lamp for 10 seconds, taking it out, putting it back in. And then when I was happy with it, I would have put it in the lamp for a full 60 seconds to make sure it's all fully cured. And now I'm going in with some rhinestone gel. This is from my cart. And we're going to stick some diamonds are the girl's best friend. Um, I've got some pointy pack, pointy pack, pointed back green rhinestones. I'm going to stick in the middle. I think I only stick one in actually. Oh, I decided that was too small. Let's stick a bigger one in using my wax picker and then the back end of that to get it where I want it and then my finger because you can't go wrong with that <laughs> and then going over it with some top coat making sure I get it in between the gaps this will help make sure it doesn't come off I'm making sure that it's fully on the in all the gaps and on top of it. And I would have put that in the lamp. And now I'm going in with my liner brush and a darker green just to give it some more texture and depth. <laughs>
And I'll stick that in the lamp for 60 seconds. Now I'm going in with a lighter green to add some more texture and depth. Those are our keywords today. Do you like it? Are you loving it? If you've made it to this point in the video, do me a favour and leave me a comment. Um, we're, and do one of these little four leaf clover emojis. Pretty please. I'm going in with some white now to add some more texture and depth. I wonder how many times I've said that in this video. Texture and depth. <laughs> Oh, but yep, yeah, hadn't I hadn't add in some highlights with some well oh, white gel polish, not well, and then in the lamp again. And now I'm going with some um, more white gel polish. I'm just going to add a couple of little sparkles to our rainbow or stars, whatever you want to call them. I think I only show this me painting this one. I do a few of these. But like I said, this video is long. Admiring the beauty. And you can see I've done a few of those stars. Some big ones and little ones. I love these. I love them. I wish I could wear them all the time. But like I said, I've got kids. I'm a mother of dogs <laughs> and these nails don't go well with the uh, getting harnesses on and off etc etc I'm doing some more four leaf clovers now we're not doing these in 3D though just using my dotting tool to paint them my dotting tool and then my liner brush again Is there any Irish people watching or did you celebrate St Paddy's? I've been binge watching Gypsy Brides. Is it my big fat gypsy wedding? I love it. Absolutely love it. The Irish travellers. Not all of them are Irish. Some of them are English, but I absolutely love it. So good. All the sparkles, the amazing dresses, the massive amazing dresses. I'm sad though. They don't, I don't think they they do the show anymore and um, what I've been watching was filmed in like 2012 so uh, I'd love to do some gypsy wedding nails that would be amazing the bling that I could use Ugh. we did some big ones and little ones and I do the same on the little finger as well but I know that I don't show that because once again this video is extremely long and once I'm happy with that I'm going to cure it in the lamp and then I'm going to go in with some different shades of green just to add some more dun 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 texture and depth <laughs> I do apologise for the lack of uh, music in the background, but yeah, like I said. I mean, they say that people will say, you know, they demonetise you for having the music in the videos and I don't have enough views to make any money from these videos. But when I inevitably do become a YouTube superstar and these videos are still on here, people go and watch them and then I'll lose out on money and why would I want to do that? So yeah. <laughs> did I say that I love these nails already? I think I did a few times, but I do really like these nails. Do you like these nails? Leave a comment. It helps with engagement and then more people see my videos and I won't feel like I'm just talking to myself. If you can hear those noises, that's my dog huffing and puffing in the background. 
wondering who I'm talking to. I'm talking to myself, babes. Are you okay, little man? We're coming up for that time. My favourite time is blink time, baby. I've got my rhinestone glue from the car. And now we're going to add some bling bling. Bling bling. Money ain't a thing. Going to do a little cluster at the top. Using these uh, nice big green gems. I couldn't tell you where they're from. If you've watched my nail haul videos, I will say in there. So if you want to know where they're from, you've got to go and watch all of them. Watch all my videos. All like 10 of them. So I've gone in with a big one and now I'm getting some little pointed back ones to add to my little cluster and it's just sliding around because it's so heavy gone are the days when you had to put them on with a top coat and acrylic so they're just sliding around but that is the beauty, I can play with it until I've got it exactly how I like it and then I'll whack it in the lamp. Well, first I'm going to use my little handheld LED lamp and I'll just flash cure it for a few seconds just so it doesn't slide off when I put it in the lamp. And then I'm going in with some more gel. I think they were sliding around and I wanted to add more, but it was just becoming a big mess. And then I cure it again. And I'm sticking the tip of that in, in the back of the uh, stones, just filling in the gaps. That'll stop water getting in there and there being gaps for my hair to get caught in not that I'm keeping them on but you know force of habit I'm obsessed with these I love them yes I do have an excessive amount of crystals. <laughs> Can you, is there such thing as too much? No. I don't think so. Oh, look at shine. Shine, shine. I will. Oh, look at them. I'm obsessed. And I stuck them in the lamp again for a full cure. And I'm going to do the same with a little finger. Add some more bling bling. My desk is an absolute mess at this point. I can't find what I'm looking for. <laughs> I never know the best way to organise all my crystals, like whether to do them all by colour, by size, and then I like buy more and the little organisers, like am I going to take bits out and put other bits in so you just have to deal with it as is I do have a bin I don't know why all those lint wipes are still there this is torture to watch my apologies I think I've got cramp in my hand then <laughs> Shine on, shine on. Using my little handheld lamp again. I think this one is from Timu. Looks like two quid, two pounds, two dollars, two put wherever you're from, wherever your currency. Just 
admiring them, making sure I like them before I stick them in the lamp. And now I need to shuffle and move all these stones out of the way. Like, shall I add more? Hmm. Yes. The answer is always yes. <laughs> Change my mind. Too much. Not that it looks like too much, too much fast. This little pack, I think, was a few pounds as well from AliExpress. Let's add some more glue. And I'm waffling and rambling. If you made it this far, comment with a diamond emoji <laughs> oh. I say this people always say these things in their videos and I watch on my TV so I can't actually comment unless I get on my phone and go and do it which I don't so I understand if you can't be asked how fun do these look Don't worry, we are coming to the end of the video. I'm about to add my top coat. We're doing shiny top coat over everything except for our little cloud. I'm going right up to my uh, crystal, never over the top. Please don't do that. It takes away from the full intensity of that shine, that bling bling. It makes them look dull. So go up as close as I can, just touching the edges of them and then coating the whole nail. Making sure that all our design's covered. And I do the same on all the other fingers, all the other nails. And then we'll pop it in the lamp for a full 60 seconds. I won't show all of it because this is just going on for too long. And here we are finished I love them I'm gonna go in with a cuticle oil because that always just the mm, piece of resistance the little icing on the cake at the end so that my cuticles don't look all crusty and dusty for when I take my little pictures trying to make sure I don't get it on the nails just on the skin I'm rubbing it in have you oiled your cuticles today hmm I bet you haven't. I bet they are thirsty. Go put some oil on them. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, adding cuticle oil to your cuticles and then your nails as well will make your sets last longer and make your hands look better. There's plenty of stuff out there if you don't believe me. When your nails underneath start drying up and curling and then your product starts to lift. Anyway, this isn't a science lesson. Look at those. Aren't they spectacular? If I do say so myself, patting myself on the back. I love them. They're beautiful. You can see here I've painted the cloud with a matte top coat as well as the clover, the four leaf clover. Because it just shows all that texture and depth <laughs> do you love them do you love them if you do give me some emojis oh there's jack that's my little boy and now you can just look at them again from more angles if you made it this far thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it let me know what you think of this set in the comments if you haven't already please consider subscribing it really helps me out every time i get any subscriber i do a little happy dance anyway i love you all bye